Hello and welcome everyone to episode 17, season 2 of Digitales. My name is Fezhan Sayed, founder and CEO of East River. And today I have a special guest who is going to talk to us about something very important for us to learn about, Down syndrome. Um, we have someone here who is going to talk to us about what Down syndrome is, how they've dealt with it. Ali Allahwala has a daughter who's had this uh, disease and she's been dealing with it for life and what he's done to contribute to society is even though he's a master's in law from King's College and uh, studied law and accounting from the London School of Economics completely different from, from what he's sort of been passionate about what he's focused about he's actually set up an organization called the Karachi Down Syndrome Program that helps individuals who face the challenges of Down syndrome. How are you today, Ali? Very well, Fazan. Thank you for having me. Great. So tell me, Ali, what, what, tell me about Down syndrome. What is Down syndrome and what has been your journey with this uh, for the last many years? Um, achha, sabse pehle to aapne jo introduction diya is very kind of you. Thank you. But uh, you mentioned something that's given me an opportunity uh, to make your audience uh, a little bit more aware uh, because we're all in the process of learning because understanding Down syndrome is still a new concept in Pakistan. Right. So, the first thing is that Down syndrome is not a disease. Uh, okay. It's actually a genetic condition, right? Okay. Um, so, I, I wanna, I, I'll just briefly, without getting too technical, I'll briefly explain to you what Down syndrome is. So, uh, in our bodies as human beings, our bodies are made up of billions and billions of cells. And so our hair, our skin, everything contains cells. And each cell has 23 pairs of chromosomes, which is, which is essentially our genetic material, right? And when there is an extra chromosome or the 21st chromosome in the 21st pair, um, so uh, uh, that person will have then 47 chromosomes in every cell of their body. Mm -hmm. And that cell structure, that genetic makeup is actually uh, understood as uh, that person having Down syndrome, right? Uh, so okay. essentially people with Down syndrome have a different genetic makeup. Um, ha having said that, the probabilities of certain illnesses developing as a result of having Down syndrome may be higher. Uh, but Down syndrome okay. itself is not a disease. So, so it's a genetic uh, by, composition uh, and, and that genetic composition may create sort of different side effects of illness. Yes, you can say that certain diseases ki probabilities jo hai, wo bar jati hai. but Down syndrome itself is not a disease because it's not a disease nahi hai, so nobody suffers from Down syndrome. Uh, uh, people have Down syndrome, so it's merely a fact, right? Um, so, and, and then, uh, the, the journey, our journey kind of started, uh, and you mentioned that I have a daughter who has down syndrome. Her name is Alea. She was born in 2011. She's 11 years old now. And, um, you know, when, when we had her, um, when it, she was our first born. And when mm -hmm. you have your first child as young parents, you know, the, it's, it's a, it's a, it's a great celebration. Um, you know, on, mm -hmm. on uh, Alea's maternal side, she was the first, first child in the family. Um, it was supposed to be a lot of celebration and it really, it was the absolute opposite of that for us because um, when she was born, she was born premature. Uh, it was um, a lot of crisis management. Then when she was born, uh, the way that kind of early diagnosis was delivered to us, um, mm -hmm. there was a lot of issues in that process. Um, and then the early care that she received, you know, she was born with a diagnosis of Down syndrome and six weeks premature. She was placed in a regular nursery, issues in care. She had a cardiac arrest as a result, nine hours after her birth. So she oh, was wow. gone for around a minute. Um, she was resuscitated. Uh, then she was on the wind wow. for around 10 days. She was in the NICU for around a month in the hospital. And uh, at that point in time, honestly, it didn't, it didn't look like she would make it um, because every kind of kind of medication, uh, nothing seemed to be working to fight off her infections. 
Um, so everybody had kind of given prepared? up. And, what, was this something that was detected uh, during sort of the before she was delivered? Um, there were signs later on uh, in the pregnancy that were indicative of uh, Alea possibly having Down syndrome, but it wasn't definitive because, again, um, you know, pregnancy ke doran, uh, there was some there was some testing and screening that got missed out, and so, like I said, there's a lot of issues throughout that process, and. Right. You know, when eventually, you know, when I told you and she was not well in the hospital and everybody had given up. And in fact, I mean, to be very honest, um, the bleak picture, the doom and gloom that we had been shown by a lot of professionals. Honestly, I mean, there was a point in time where we felt it's better if she goes because we were told that if wow. she lives, you know, her life is going to be miserable. Our lives are going to be miserable. Um, so it was a really kind of depressing situation. But, you know, I always say that Allah Ta'ala has written her life's life, thi, so she made it through, uh, she fought through the infections, and we got out of the hospital. And the, the larger trauma actually started post, because when we thought, okay, we're out of the hospital, we're out of the bad place, because nobody wants to go mm-hmm. to the hospital, right? Mm-hmm. Um, the, the, the bigger trauma started then, because then we were like, okay, now we're out of the woods, in a manner of speaking, but what do we do? Because we don't understand what Down syndrome is, we don't we don't know what uh, the what lies in the future of a person with down syndrome so and there was no support around to, in the community we, there was no organization there was there was not no place you could go to yeah so there was no organization that uh, that would that was dedicated uh, towards individuals with down syndrome towards providing them services provide even uh, guidance to families uh, there was mm-hmm. nothing. So we were really at a loss. Um, so after handling kind of the initial trauma, uh, we started searching online. Okay, what do we do? Where do we go? Um, and we thought, okay, let's let's first start off with because, you know, we had our aspirations and aspirations in our education. We thought, okay, what's the best mm-hmm. place in the world? So we found out that there is a Down syndrome clinic inside the children's hospital in Boston, which is the number mm-hmm. one children's hospital in the world. And... Okay. Um, you know, so we said, okay, so let's get up and go. So we left. Um, and when we, our initial reactions in the US were so 180 degrees off what we were experiencing in our own motherland because yahan pe doom and gloom scenario tha. Koi representation nahi tha. And mm-hmm. when we, when we got to the US, um, the, and I always tell this story. That, we're waiting for Alea's first appointment at the Down syndrome clinic. And I saw a young gentleman walking around. Achha, people with Down syndrome na, have certain common physical characteristics that can help identify that they have Down syndrome. So by then, we knew a little bit about Down syndrome. So I could identify, I could clearly see that this person walking around had Down syndrome. So right. I was very curious because our to told us that there was no value in their life. So I went up to the lady at the front desk and I asked her, who is this? person what's he doing here because it mm. looked like he was working and was she looked at me in a very weird way like it was a big invasion of privacy because it kind of right. was and and then she responded to me very kindly and she said he's uh he's part of our team he's an employee and he works here right and you know, i was completely shocked because i was thinking that future walk this gentleman is doing his daily business working in, yeah. Um, yeah and then the more exposure we got in the west the more we got to see individuals with down syndrome and their stories and meeting them in person you know people who were musicians and dancers and yoga instructors and montessori teachers and um, people just gen- working in a supermarket or having a small business or owning a cafe or working in a cafe i mean there were just so many opportunities and you know my wife and i got to talking experiences that led us to the creation of KDSP but we got to talking and we were like Pakistan is the fifth largest population in the world there are approximately 300,000 individuals with Down syndrome living in Pakistan who is representing them who is and and, I mean who is going to guide them their families who's going to provide them services there's nothing in sight and uh, so we thought you know we 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 thought we had to get something going 
and so but, but we pledge to ourselves because so, so the first three years in the lives of all children but more so children with down syndrome are very important because these are known as the early intervention years the first 1000 days of life in which you know the kids are really developing um and so we we pledge to ourselves that the first three years we would dedicate you know whole and soul to alea and then once she would turn three we would start something so we start she turned three in january of 2014 and we kind of started kdsp in february of 2014 and again we didn't know where we were heading at that point in time but we thought the first most important thing is to start a sort of a support group because mm-hmm. we were witnessing parents mm-hmm. being in complete shame at um, knowing that they, they have a child who has down syndrome there was so shame, much a stigma actually, around why that, shame? that we thought because... stigma tha na acceptance nahi hai mashre ke andar so agar agar aapko main misal dun if 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 i mean there, i can tell you so many stories um from stories where if if a child with down syndrome is playing in a play area in a mall and the mall manager comes to you as a parent and says oh you know uh, other parents are complaining ki ye bachcha sahi nahi hai aap ap is bachche ko hata le hamara bachcha iske sath nahi khel sakta wow ha, how would really? you feel as a parent unbelievable or something as recent as recent as a private airline in pakistan refusing to let a uh, a child with down syndrome board the aircraft with his mother simply because he has down syndrome nothing else i have i can't the child believe. did not do i'm i'm in shock right it's i mean so 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 when when and this incident happened within the past couple of months so i mean aaj se 10 saal pehle jab hum kdsp shuru kar rahe the main aapko bayan nahi kar sakta the calls that we used to get from families and the stigma and the taboo and the shame that they used to feel see i understand that there's a lack of awareness right i get that and a lack of awareness breeds all sorts of things in someone's mind but for someone to prevent someone from boarding a plane or to say ki nahi aapka bachcha aur mera bachcha is bachche ke sath nahi khel sakta matlab that that there's got to be something in built or some wiring that's in there or some sort of preconceived notions that are beyond lack of awareness या सो देखें इसके भी मल्टीपल एंगल्स हैं ना सो देखें एक एंगल तो ये है ये याद रखें दैट चिल्ड्रन आर इनोसेंट सो सो चिल्ड्रन विल मॉडल बिहेवियर दैट दे सी इन द एडल्ट्स इन द ग्रोन अप्स अराउंड देम राइट सो एक तो ये इशू है दूसरा इशू ये है दैट अ लॉट ऑफ दीज परसेप्शन आर कमिंग फ्रॉम द फैक्ट दैट when individuals with disability in particular if over so many years if if they have not been given the due share of services that they need to develop and grow as people mm-hmm. then you haven't really seen their best side have you so i actually don't blame anybody uh, because the lack of empathy stems from the fact that they may have they a they don't understand what down syndrome is b they may have had some negative experiences around it simply because um people with down syndrome around them or they may have interacted with would not have gotten the opportunities to develop to their best selves right right so misconceptions tagged with lack of services lead right. to the you know the development of these notions um that alter behavior सो अब मैं आपको छोटी सी मिसाल दूं अभी हम हम डाउन सिंड्रोम की बात करते हैं इफ आई आस्क यू वेरी फ्रेंकली एंड व्हाई डू वी कॉल इट डाउन सिंड्रोम इज इट टू योर नॉलेज दैट वाज वन ऑफ माय क्वेश्चंस एक्चुअली दैट वाज एक्चुअली वन ऑफ माय क्वेश्चंस इज व्हाई डिड इट गेट इट्स नेम फ्रॉम या सो सो एंड इतना मैं लोगों से सुनता हूं दैट दे फील देयर इज दिस मिसकंसेप्शन दैट दे बिकॉज़ देयर इज दिस वर्ड डाउन इन इट एंड बिकॉज़ इट्स क्लासिफाइड एज एन इंटेलेक्चुअल डिसेबिलिटी people add those two things together because the word down is sort of negative you know like they're going right. down or less than you know that kind of a, so so people think ke these people these individuals are called down syndrome because they are somehow less than typical right. individuals 
typically developing individuals. Whereas that is the farthest thing away from the truth. There was a doctor back in, back in the day in England by the name of John Langdon Down. And he was the first person to identify the common characteristics in individuals with Down syndrome. And so the condition was named after him because his surname was Down. So it could have been called the John Langdon. syndrome. Yeah, and so Langdon Kuch syndrome. Kuch bhi kar sakte the. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, 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 exactly. So, it was so clear that his name was Down, the surname. So, this Down syndrome was right. uh, or con- to is Down syndrome. So, we have to correct these kind of perceptions bhi karne na, for people to understand that these people right. are not less than. They right. develop differently and you have to give them. And there's so much of research that has been done all over the world to understand what are those services that these individuals need to develop optimally. मतलब मैं आपको एक छोटी सी चले मिसाल देता हूँ लेट्स से फैजान लेट्स से आपकी हाइट जो है वो फाइव फीट इलेवन इंचेज है ठीक है अच्छा पीपल वे डाउन सिंड्रोम जनरली आर नॉट वेरी टॉल राइट सो लेट्स से आपकी हाइट फाइव फुट इलेवन इंचेज है और हमारी जो एवरेज सीलिंग्स होती हैं हमारे रूम्स में लेट्स से वो सेवन फीट होती हैं एट फीट होती हैं ठीक है लेट्स से मैं उस सीलिंग हाइट को गिरा के ना फाइव फीट एट इंचेज कर देता हूँ ठीक है एंड Fezan will all of a sudden start walking hunched and mm. then Fezan is going to start having issues with his back mm-hmm. and let's say an individual with down syndrome will have a height 5 feet 6 inches mm-hmm. and they'll be fine because the ceiling height will be okay they'll be walking upright and straight and then and they'll say yaar Fezan seems to have an issue i don't know mm-hmm. what's wrong with him mm-hmm. he's grown so tall he has a height issue right and now he has to be hunched and now he's all yeah. the time with the doctors with having he needs back, back surgeries issues, and all of yeah. that so fezan <laughs> yeah. has yeah so fezan has some issues yaar i don't know what's wrong with him yaar we can't talk to him he has issues he's all the time sick he's all the time in yeah. the hospital man i don't i yeah. can't deal with fezan right so we need to understand the needs of individuals with down syndrome our entire world is because the majority lies in typically developing individuals like you and i so our world is designed that way our education right. systems are designed that way our job markets are designed that way so we need to we need to kind of stretch that range of acceptance to include people of neurodiversity into the equation as well so walk me through i mean you went through this experience you saw the way people had this stigma and how you know there was a lack of awareness right and at the same time you had the means to you know sort of take your daughter to the best care in the us and the world where you found that there was no stigma in fact people lived a very normal everyday life so what motivated you to sort of come back and create this organization to drive awareness um that's an interesting question yaar um because the thing is to that you honest, could easily lived your life and you could have given your kid the care that you know she needed and just moved on with it but you chose ki nahi mujhe ek idara banana hai aur mujhe iske bare mein aagahi phailani hai and that's a big step so there are few reasons there are few reasons so there was i mean i'll be honest there was a point in time where we were at crossroads and you know my wife arzeen and i used to have these conversations ke you know we could get up and go and live in any country in the world so we have that choice uh, should we do that um the other option was to stick it out in our home in pakistan but then we would have to change everything because the desire was i mean my only selfish motive out of kdsp my daughter alia has hardly ever received any service from kdsp in fact she's always been the guinea pig right because it is things that we have learned through her experiences with her that we have applied to this institution but my only selfish motive i guess is that i want my daughter to grow up in a society in a community where where she and people like her are accepted and respected and included within the community um and you know fezan we've traveled the world there is no there is there is no identity uh um, the kind of identity that we get in our home in pakistan you know we unfortunately don't get anywhere else and and you asked you know why set it up yaar how could we justify it to to our if my creator asked me this question 
that I gave you so much of resource and what did you do with it for other people? I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't have an answer. So where, you know, we have so much of resource to be able to do what's needed for our own daughter. How can we not, uh, you know, make that same thing available to the other people who are struggling with it? It was an, it was a very simple equation. We never no the, this was the immediate thought that came to us. We have to start something. We have, it was our, it was like the responsibility, um, you know, so, so it was, it was mm -hmm. actually very simple. And just as we grew it just became clearer and clearer because there was just so much of need and there was, and people just started joining the bandwagon. So when KDSP started, you know, we started with seven families back in 2014, seven families. We were doing a, uh, we started, I told you, you know, we started in February of 2014. So in March, mm -hmm. somebody came and told me, 21st March, World Down Syndrome Day. Hota hai. Mm -hmm. So we have to do something. So I said, uh, but we've just started. We don't have an organization. We have nothing. What do we do? So we said, mm -hmm. kuch to karna hai. so we started with this outdoor billboard campaign. So we made a, uh, we did a, a, a theme-based photo shoot. We made a montage, ran on TV, did, did billboards. We needed 10 families for that photo shoot, 10 families. Mm -hmm. And we were able to get seven families because of mm -hmm. the big stigma and the taboo. And, and, uh, and today when we do a campaign for many, several years now, we've been, we have to, we have to turn away dozens and dozens of families because Uswak, nobody was ready to accept and announce to the world that my child has Down syndrome. And today everybody wants to be a part of it because the families have become empowered. Mm -hmm. So they are now, there's no shame. You know, now they're like, yes, my child has Down syndrome. Where is the issue? Where is the problem? There is no issue here. Right. And how many families today are you sort of assisting or supporting? We are almost at 1500 families Wow. Uh, now, starting from seven, eight years ago. Mm -hmm. um, and these families get some form of service from us um, because we make customized kind of plans for each family that comes to us. Mm -hmm. uh, it's not because KDSP is essentially still a support group. It's not a school or it's not a therapy institution. It's a one-stop solution for the Down syndrome community. And we actually work in six areas of service. So um, we have this, uh, when families come to us, we tell them uh, that we are on a kashti with them together, kashti as in a boat, that mm -hmm. we are on this boat with them together. and we will uh, sail across the seas and there will be high tides uh, implying you know challenging times but there will mm -hmm. be calm seas meaning that there will be the nicer more relaxing days but the important thing is we are in this kashti together and the word kashti actually is significant because each letter of this word um, is one of the areas of service at kdsp so okay. being a one stop solution for the down syndrome community the letter k stands for khandani sahara which is all of our family support related initiatives. Um, right. The letter A stands for Agahi, which is raising awareness about Down syndrome amongst the community. The letter S stands for Sehet, which is all of our healthcare related work. Mm -hmm. H stands for Hunar, which is our vocational and skill building related work. Uh, T mm -hmm. stands for Talim, which is our education related initiatives. And I stands for Ibtidai Bunyad, which is the early childhood intervention work speech therapy, occupational therapy, physical therapy, that is really important for kids in those early formative years. Interesting. Wow. That's, I mean, that's a very full focus and you managed to get 1500 families. How did you, you know, so that period of, let's say the last eight years, when you grew mm -hmm. from seven to 1500, you know, driving awareness of this organization was obviously a big challenge. What was the single most successful initiative for you in driving awareness and being able to recruit families as a result? Um, that's a very interesting question. Multiple, there are multiple areas. I, I, I don't think I can pinpoint the most successful one, but I can definitely pinpoint the one that we cherish the most, um, which is the annual KDSP carnival. Mm -hmm. So th that's our largest awareness raising initiatives on ground. Because we have decided that we change perceptions, karte hain, so we can't just do it through videos and social media. We have to make people feel it and see it right. and, and live it, right? 
So we started organizing this event whereby we said we would have a carnival that would have kids with Down syndrome, uh, part of our family network, uh, come and just celebrate World Down Syndrome Day. And we would invite people from the community to come and also enjoy that event and see how inclusion works. And so we've done seven carnivals so far. And the first one was attended by 1,200 people. And the last one was attended by over 6,000 people. And it's, it's, it's a celebration of inclusion. And it's an event where people of typical abilities, typically developing people will come and they will enjoy that event. And they will see that there are children and individuals around them who visibly have Down syndrome, but they're not a threat to anybody. And they're mm. also standing in the queues and they're also playing the games and they're also dancing on the stage. And yes, they do communicate a little differently. Yes, their speech may not be that understandable, but hey, I mean, we're all different. Right. So the, the message of peaceful coexistence and the power of inclusion really comes through through an event like the KDSP Carnival. Because there's real experience, there's firsthand interaction. And I think people really walk away with, okay, I now understand sort of you know, what it's about. Absolutely. Absolutely. Now tell me, you created this into then an NGO, I'm assuming, and organized it under an NGO nonprofit banner. There's a lot of stigma around nonprofits and NGOs and running NGOs in Pakistan because of the way some of them have been misused. What were some of the challenges you faced in setting up this NGO in Pakistan? Um, oh, I don't even know where to start. So KDSP <laughs> is a... What all the challenges is, you faced? <laughs> um, KDSP is a Section 42 company, which is registered under the SECP. So what we did was um, we knew when we were starting, you know, we had always learned from our elders that, uh, you know, you, you only get credibility once through who you are, your background, and then it's very easy to lose it. So we decided to go the difficult but extremely transparent route. So a Section 42 company is the most difficult form of a nonprofit to create and maintain because it has a lot of regulatory requirements. Uh, so we set it up that way. We got one of the big four firms to uh, audit us from the first day. We got certifications from the Philanthropy Center of Pakistan. Um, so we got all, we checked all the boxes that were important to ensure transparency. Mm -hmm. um, issues, you're right. Unfortunately, there were many nonprofits that have been used for wrongful purposes. And that has put people like us in very difficult situations because, um, you know, in terms of a lot of clearances, a lot of regulatory requirements come in that really derail us at many times from the actual work that we are supposed to be doing. Right. And it's it's sometimes it's really hurtful and it's really disappointing because, you know, it's like we have no gain uh, in terms of, I mean, there is there is a, it's a, it's a space of goodness. Right. I mean, we're just trying to spread spread positive messages. But, uh, you know, sometimes issues regulatory in terms of screening um, mm -hmm. there, it just it just kind of bogs you down. Um, so that has been an issue. I think in general, the nonprofit landscape needs a little bit more, little bit more organization. Um, so organizations, for example, like the Philanthropy Center of Pakistan are doing great work in consolidating information, um, mm -hmm. in kind of bringing together a toolkit of sorts for, non for people who want to start nonprofit initiatives to kind of have accessible, um, you know, to be able to kind of take their journey forward. Um, and they also, I think, verify I also, the entity for uh, for the nonprofit status. I believe Section 100C or absolutely. Uh, 100C is a different exemption. That's an FBR related exemption. But the Philanthropy Center of Pakistan absolutely does a certification, um, mm -hmm. and they they do an on ground visits. They study all of your documentation, everything, and then they certify you. And unless you're certified by the PCP, there are other subsequent exemptions that you get from the government authorities that you can't Correct. get unless you're certified by the PCP. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I always also feel that, unfortunately, Hamare uh, non-profit work can never go up. We can never scale it up to the scale that the state can, right? 
um i believe that non profits are should be creating a successful model that can be replicated um you know possibly by state institutions if it doesn't exist already right i i told you we are up to 1500 families we are already mm-hmm. like kind of capacities have been breached we are already like there are waiting lists and all of those things and only the down syndrome community the population of karachi is supposed to be somewhere between 25 and 30000 individuals so you know uh, we we are only trying to we are trying to create a successful model that um that we can replicate across different cities of pakistan uh, for that model to then be scaled up by uh, hopefully the government authorities um so yeah and if there was if there was one change let's say in the whole process that you've seen now and you you're intimately familiar with the whole thing if there was one change you were to bring about to make this process easy so that people like you who are you know sort of inspired to bring change and want to do it through a structured process of an ngo non-profit what would that change be on the government level be it on the regulatory level what would that change be um i think some sort of consolidation um there are currently the lot of redundancies in the system so we have to you know a non-profit has to no matter what scale you are you have to engage with like several different uh, authorities to get to the next step and that is so overwhelming i mean we are we i still call us kdsp very small non-profit uh, and it's so difficult for a for a startup like non-profit or a small growing non-profit to deal with these multiple regulatory authorities and to handle and address all of these redundancies it is so difficult so i guess some sort of consolidation and centralization and kind of making that process easy uh, for people to be able to focus on the cause that they are picking up or the work or the substance that they are picking up rather than getting stuck in the administrative issues i believe would really help the non-profit sector interesting so one stop shop where you were able to sort of do everything together some consolidation and whether that's at the pcp level or at the government level it would help at least the entire process rather than having to run around different places to get sort of the approvals done to move to the next level yeah the administrative side needs to be made easier na no? for everybody so that they can focus on the work that they're trying to do and you you've named it kdsp with the karachi being the focus of it why not consider take it taking it nationally and make it pakistan uh, focused yeah we had a lot of debate on this when we were setting it up so inherently like i said kdsp is a support group um we have mm-hmm. had to build in all of providing all there is no i am familiar i'm not familiar with any organization in the world that works with the kind of a uh, one stop solution and the kind of integration of services that kdsp has i've actually had mm-hmm. our a lot of collaborators in in the us actually say to me that they're envious of the of where we've gotten because they haven't been able to get to this kind of integration i don't necessarily say this is a good thing it's because we've had to take these services in house because there just isn't enough quality in those services available in the city for us mm-hmm. to be able to say uh you know an x institution will be able to handle this need and where it is we never do that service so for example in healthcare we partner with the akhan university hospital and we set up the first down syndrome healthcare uh clinic of pakistan back in 2017 we didn't set up mm-hmm. a hospital uh, because mm-hmm. we we trust their service they're very very good and so we don't need to duplicate that effort but as far as for example therapy services was concerned there was a lack of capacity in the city there was a lack of quality in the city and we had to take that up on our own because we said we have to do it it's important essentially we remain a family support group these additional services we had to create because it was the need at the hour and mm-hmm. these support groups are always very close knit we are not mm-hmm. a, a national advocacy group at the moment that is something that we do but that's not to our core to our core we are a support group and support groups are always supposed to be closely knit and intimate so even for a city of the size of karachi 
one right. kdsp is not enough so that is why we and, and then also because fezan when you declare yourself as a national entity you have it's really it's it's not it's very easy for us to get a lot more families registered with us that's mm-hmm. not the difficult part the difficult part is once they've been onboarded you have to provide them with service you have to meet their expectations because you've just given them hope and if you mm-hmm. can't meet on that hope then what good are you right so That's we true. want to stay small or we want to make a large impact in the lives of a few rather than just touching the lives of many and not making a meaningful impact learn our way through because remember this is work that is new in pakistan um so there's a lot of learning that even today we have every day and then figure out ways to uh, slowly and gradually scale up and make our presence available to all of pakistan but it will take a little bit of time and so now with with you supporting these families and there being awareness around this you know if let's say an individual uh, with down syndrome seeks employment or wants to work somewhere right what op- opportunities exist for them today and if let's say an organization wants to sort of as part of their inclusion uh, objectives bring on people and support them and employ them and get them to work i mean what are some of the things that we need to be mindful of on both ends how do they find the work and let's say how does an organization bring them in and what are sort of the the needs and what is what kind of care do they need to take to make sure that they have a good experience beautiful so dekhe shuru ke kdsp ke saalon mein na we really focused on the younger children because when you lay a strong foundation in those early intervention years mm-hmm. the journey onward becomes much easier and much um i don't want to say better but um you get a lot more out of it so the um, ibtidai component of your kashti is where the focus is it is so important fezan i mean i've had if if for example i mean i'll give you a simple example if a, i've had in the past a parent come with a 10 year old child and say you know i'm now thinking of starting speech therapy for my daughter because she is not talking starting mm-hmm. speech therapy right this was a few years ago it's the the if the child is not talking by the age of 10 you miss the window speech therapy wow. starts on day 1 on day 1 right. it's speech therapy is not just talking it's communication and right. so if if you didn't intervene in those early years and give the child what they needed to be able to talk and communicate then they've just lost that if you st- if you're thinking of starting that at 10 years of age and so already bahut sare issues aane shuru ho jayenge future mein in terms of inclusion within the community right so that mm-hmm. is why our focus is and always has been on the younger kids and because the result will take time but the younger you start the better the results theek hai having mm-hmm. said that at the same time we do have plenty of adults who come to kdsp and are part of our vocational training and skill building programs and what we are trying to do is to develop certain specific skills in them that will make them um, available uh, for employment and so there mm-hmm. are a few individuals with down so for example i'm very proud to say that kdsp has a small preschool and there's an assistant teacher in that preschool who has down syndrome and similarly there are other institutions where we have been able to collaborate with those institutions and create specific roles for employment for individuals with down syndrome that suit their mm-hmm. abilities because mm-hmm. that is the eventual goal right what do we want what is our desire forget kids with down syndrome what is our desire from typical individuals we want we want people to be able to live an independent value adding life right Correct. we don't want people we don't want you don't want i don't want we don't want to be dependent on other people goal and that goal has to tie up with employ other employment or um you know your own self business um so that's something that we're continuously working on uh and there are plenty of individuals that can be trained to take up different roles in organizations and we continuously work with different companies uh to be able to do that interesting 
Fascinating. And and last question I have for you is to anyone, you know, there are a lot of people who want to spend their careers or spend their time sort of contributing, giving back to society, and they want to pursue a career in social service or in the NGO sector. I mean, is there any specific skill set or anything after your experience, sort of being an outsider who entered this space, is there anything that you think is necessary to have as a skill set before you embark on a career in this space? um kindness and empathy that's it you can learn we learn every you can learn everything you know we under, we now understand that human beings can de-learn and relearn until the end of their life and wo kehte hain na ke jo buddhist monks hote hain unki mashhoor misal hai ke wo they only speak when through three doors in their minds and the first door is they ask themselves what i'm about to say is it the truth if it's not mm-hmm. the truth cancel ho jata hai and bhai baat khatam mm-hmm. ho jati hai and if it's the truth then it goes to the second door and when mm-hmm. it goes to the second door to so we push them what i'm about to say it might be the truth but is it necessary do i need to say this and mm-hmm. if it's not necessary even though if it's the truth it doesn't come out but mm-hmm. if it's necessary then it goes through to the third door which to me is the door and that door what i'm about to say, is it kind is it a kind thing to say so it might be true it might be necessary but if it's mm. not a kind thing to say it doesn't go through so if you ask me um mm. you know non profit work and when people when 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 people join kdsp and become part of the team every time that's the only thing i've ever said to everyone. i can't guarantee anything to you Mm-hmm. But the only thing that I can guarantee they made a difference to me, feeling to go home with. Um, so just if if somebody is just has certain amount of kindness and certain amount of empathy, that's it. That's all you need. Everything else you can learn. Brilliant, amazing. I love this. I, I didn't know about the three doors. I think we all need to sort of uh, process our thoughts in those three doors before we can convert those into speech. Uh, really, really nice talking to you, Ali. Uh, loved hearing the story and the journey that you had with Aleha, you and Farzine, and you know, wish you guys sort of the best success in in promoting this cause and creating this uh, this support group for individuals in Karachi. And hopefully, this is a, this is an initiative that will spread nationwide because. you know this is awareness that we need and one of the biggest challenges on many topics in our community in our country is lack of awareness and lack of awareness breeds all sorts of behaviors that are perceived to be negative behaviors and so let's do our best and hopefully uh, you know we're able to propagate that message and assist you with that as well um again thanks a lot ali thanks for the time and i wish you all the success with this organization and if there's anything we can ever do to help you out in promoting this message we're happy to help thank you fazan thank you for the opportunity i'm glad that we had this conversation today and hopefully um you know your viewers will uh, um uh, will feel today that uh, the the perceptions about down syndrome uh for them we we've, we've been able to add some value to that and changed a little bit of that perception thank you i think i think so i think so thanks ali and thank you all for tuning in today we'll see you next week bye bye